The 110 freeway is hands down one of my favorite freeways in Los Angeles. It's a relatively straight and easy ride and it makes getting to USC, downtown LA, or practically anywhere in LA a breeze. But it's also hard to believe that building this freeway sparked a series of protests in a South LA that was very different than the one that we know today. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the South LA Recap. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to learn more about South LA on the regular. Just a quick shout out here, this channel recently surpassed 700 subscribers, and if you're watching for the first time, or especially if you're watching and you're returning, I just want to thank you for your support. There's no way this channel could have gotten this far without you. So anyways, we're going to take today and we're going to look at the history of the 110 freeway starting with the development of the Arroyo Seco Parkway and then its 22 mile long expansion through South LA. So let's jump into it. The 110 freeway today has two main sections. The Arroyo Seco Parkway which is the old and windy road that connects Los Angeles to Pasadena and the Interstate 110 which cuts through downtown South LA and the Harbor Gateway area. The earliest mention I found on the Royal Seco Parkway dates back to 1911, where, as a concept, one writer describes it as the finest highway of its kind in the world when completed. Well, it turns out that freeways didn't really exist at all in 1911, and they were a relatively new concept. The parkway, however, was a sign that society was ready to trust ordinary people with high-speed traffic. Journalists raved about how amazing it would be to get from central Los Angeles to Pasadena directly in less than 20 minutes. Over the next 26 years, the Royal Seco Parkway would remain a distant concept faced with a series of funding and land acquisition barriers that slowed the construction of this highway. To make a long story short, in 1938, Los Angeles County finally started construction on the Royal Seco Parkway, and by 1940, 29 years after the concept of the freeway was introduced in the article I showed earlier, the Royal Seco Parkway opened. In 1943, three years after the Royal Seco Parkway was built, the Los Angeles County Regional Planning Commission published a report called Freeways for the Region, which would change the face of modern Los Angeles forever. As early as 1933, planners across the nation called for an extensive parkway system called a freeway, and California became the first state to bring this concept to reality by greenlighting the Royal Seco Parkway. In the report, the commission recommends a vast network of freeways specific to the Los Angeles area to help reduce the traffic congestion caused by a growing demand for transportation of goods in the city. This master plan promised reduced road congestion and faster delivery times from port to destination. For South LA, the commission envisioned a Figueroa Parkway that would run down the center of the city, connecting San Pedro to the Santa Monica Freeway to the Hollywood Freeway to the existing Arroyo Seco Parkway. This would be just one of many freeways planned for the region that, at this point, didn't exist yet. In 1943, three years after the Royal Seco Parkway opened, the state of California submitted plans to construct the Harbor Freeway, which would cut through Southwest Los Angeles on its way to the Port of Los Angeles. Now here's a term that I want to call to your attention, Southwest Los Angeles. Before South Central became synonymous with Black Los Angeles, the Southwestern part was actually a burgeoning white middle-class super neighborhood. Housing covenants, as I explored in other videos, prevented people of color from living in the west side neighborhoods like this one until the early 1950s. Anyways, back to the freeway, by 1947, Southwest residents began protesting the state's plan to cut in between Broadway and Figueroa Street in order to construct the Harbor Freeway. Newspapers, but primarily the Southwest Wave, reported that this $36 million development would displace thousands of Southwest families. So yeah, the state of California crafted a plan to run a freeway directly down a predominantly white neighborhood. So I guess for one of the first times in LA, people of color weren't at the forefront of racist urban planning. 
The Harbor Freeway, like most Los Angeles freeways, had to be approved on a state, county, and city level to be built, and the Southwest community banded together to try to stop at least one of the governing bodies from approving the highway speed connection. Southwest residents first took their protest to the Los Angeles City Council, but the council dusted its hands and shifted the blame to the state of California. The council president at the time practically said that it was cheaper for the state to destroy thousands of homes than it was to remove all the businesses along the Figueroa or Broadway or any other commercial corridor to build a highway. After learning this, the Southwest residents took the fight to the county and challenged the freeway through editorials, letters to representatives, and peaceful assemblies. Even a local Southwest geographer published a completely unbiased study about how terrible it was to build a freeway through the vibrant and dense neighborhood. He believed the freeway should be moved eastward between Main and San Pedro streets. Others wanted to see the freeway diverted even further east along the LA River, which was already in Los Angeles' master freeway plan. In September of 1947, Southwest residents protested against the County of Los Angeles Board of Supervisors who, in a three to one vote, agreed to push the Harbor Freeway plans ahead despite opposition. By October of 1947, the state of California began construction of the Harbor Freeway in downtown near present day Hill Street. Still, the Southwest residents were relentless and continued to oppose the freeway. While the protesters lost on the county approval, they knew they still had a shot against the Los Angeles City Council. In May of 1948, construction of the northern part of the Harbor Freeway halted because the route past Olympic Boulevard, which would begin to tear through the Southwest, was not yet confirmed by the state of California. City Council member Kenneth Hahn of LA's 8th District, which represented the Southwest, said the leading state highway engineer promised he would survey an alternative to the route between Figueroa and Broadway. Key word here, promised. Hahn brought forth an alternative to the Los Angeles City Council in place of the freeway, to convert Long Beach Avenue in the east into a one-way boulevard between 9th Street and Slauson Avenue, and scrap the plans for the freeway entirely. Hahn's plan quickly evolved into a viable alternative in the southwest, and the state engineer promised he would survey it. The Los Angeles City Council quickly banded together to approve Hahn's plans to use Long Beach Avenue as an alternative to the freeway. However, just 10 days after Hahn's alternative was approved by the city, a California State Assemblyman revealed the route for the Harbor Freeway was already set in stone, as implied in the 1943 Master Freeway Plan I shared earlier. Yeah. Kenneth Hahn and the rest of the Southwest got played bad. The state, however, couldn't move full speed ahead without the majority support in the Los Angeles City Council, which just supported Hahn in his freeway alternative. But in an amazing turn of events, that wasn't an issue because the confirmed plans for the Harbor Freeway passed with an 11-2 vote in City Council. I don't know what the state said to city council, but all I can gather is that freeway had to be built. So that's all I have today for this episode of the South LA Recap. If you're interested in learning more about the 110 freeway and the rest of this story, let me know in the comments section down below. I would love to explore this and I'm very interested in what you guys think about this freeway. And as always, if you have any thoughts, leave them down in the comments section below and I'll catch you guys around on the recap.